The Primus EPIC system on Augusta Westland AW139 helicopters contains operational software integral to safe and efficient flight. Occasionally, the software must be updated or reloaded. We'll show you how to load operational software on an AW139 helicopter equipped with a Primus EPIC avionics system. These procedures apply to all Primus EPIC AW139 helicopters. To perform this task, you'll need the updated software, the remote terminal, and an interface kit like the LANTAP-10. If you don't have one, you can order it online from ICS Aero or LAN Connections. There are three steps you should follow when updating the database. Connect the remote terminal to the aircraft, load the software, and finally, perform a data load validation. Before you begin, the aircraft must be properly set up. To load software, the aircraft must be on the ground and the avionics system must be powered up for about five minutes. Once the aircraft is set up for the load, connect the remote terminal to the LAN. There are two coax connection terminals on the AW139. For long nose aircraft, both terminals are in the forward avionics compartment. For short nose aircraft, one terminal is in the forward avionics compartment and the other is near the aft baggage area. You can use whichever connection terminal you like. Remove the terminating resistor from the coax connection terminal and connect the coax cable. Connect the other end to the BNC connector on the LAN tap. Connect the Ethernet and USB cables to the LAN tap. Now we're ready for the load. There are two ways to perform a data load, a full load and a target load. A full load ensures that all the modules are loaded with the correct files, whereas a target load allows you to load software to a specific module or LRU. If your data load includes operational software, it must be loaded first. Launch the CMC software and insert the operational software CD. Click on Data Loader and wait until the CD is preloaded before continuing. On the DLS installation function page, click on Full Load. Find the CD drive and highlight the files to be loaded. Click on Select File and the configuration check will start. During the configuration check, the software will determine which files are to be loaded. Only new files will be loaded. It also calculates the time needed for the load. If a module doesn't pass the configuration check, it won't be loaded. However, you can try the load a second time at the end of the procedure. After the configuration check completes, start the load. During the load, the cockpit displays may turn off or display red X's. This is normal. The load can take several minutes. At times, it may seem as if the load is frozen or stopped. However, it is extremely important that you don't interrupt the load. The load status list may show 100% and say finishing. However, the load is not fully completed until the message loading sequence complete is displayed. The load status list shows all the modules that received the data load. Go through the list and look for any modules that did not load. If any loads fail, wait until the loading process is complete and then select retry. The retry feature automatically examines the list of modules for failures and will attempt a single reload of any modules that were not updated on the original attempt. When there are only one or two modules that need to be loaded, for example, if you've replaced a module on the MAU, a target load can be performed in place of a full load. You can perform a target load on any module that is on the LAN and can accept the data load. You'd normally perform a target load if a module failed to be loaded during a full load or if the module has been replaced or swapped as part of maintenance activity. Select Target Load in the main menu. Select the files to be loaded. 
Once you've selected the files, a list of all the modules that can be loaded with the selected file is displayed. Select the module you want to load. You can select multiple modules if you'd like. After selecting the modules, click on Next and the configuration check will start. After the configuration check, start the load. When the load is complete, a list of any modules that did not load successfully will be displayed. As with the full load, you can retry any failed loads. Any file loading errors are entered into a fault log on your remote terminal. The fault log is normally located on the C drive in a folder titled DLS Work. If you encounter any problems that you can't easily resolve, copy the log file and send it to the Honeywell or Augusta Westland help desk. After you've loaded the databases, perform a data load validation to ensure that all the data has been successfully installed. Power down the aircraft and wait at least two minutes before reapplying power. You may see the message, CMC connection failed, on the remote terminal. This is normal. Once power is reapplied, wait at least five minutes. If you've loaded new operational software or a new module is installed, the CAS messages validate configuration and system config fail may be displayed. Using the cursor control device, access the system configuration page. Review and compare the top level system part number. This number is on the CD that you use to load the software. After verifying the top level system part number, Examine the remaining pages by pushing the cursor joystick up or down. Disconnect the remote terminal and be sure to put the termination resistor back on the connector. For more details on data loading, refer to the aircraft maintenance manual. For technical assistance, contact the Honeywell Technical Operations Center.